This video is covering ecology and it's a summary of those key terms that you encounter when you're covering the topic for Leaving Cert Biology. So it's most of those terms that we encounter when we're doing the Leaving Cert exam papers. All throughout this topic, you'll encounter definitions and it's very important you check the past papers, the first of which is what is ecology? It's the study of the interactions between organisms and their environment. What is the biosphere? The biosphere is the part of the planet where life can exist. Next, we have what is an ecosystem? It's organisms' interactions with their environment. So really, an ecosystem is a community of organisms that interact with their environment. Some examples of ecosystems would be grassland, pond, meadow, hedgerow, rock pool. A feature of this topic was that you had to conduct a study of an ecosystem and grassland is quite common. And here you can see some pictures of that study. And when we did this study, we made a record of all the fauna, all the animals that we found in our grassland and all the flora, which are the plants that we found in our grassland. And one of the things that was very important was that the plants and animals are there only because they're adapted to the environment, to that specific environment. So they are adapted and that's really important. And this topic, the study of the ecosystem, is covered on another video. So when we're thinking about an ecosystem, we're thinking about communities and populations. Remember, the ecosystem is organisms' interactions with their environment. Or to help you, you could think of it as a group of clearly distinguished organisms interacting with their environment as a unit in a particular place. A community is all the different organisms in the area, in the ecosystem or habitat. So it's all the different populations or the different species. Whereas a population is all the members of the same species in an area. So it could be all the pigeons or it could be all the mice or it could be all the daisies. And all of these different populations make up the community. Habitat is defined as the place where an organism lives. So some organisms live in trees, some of them live in water, in oceans and rivers, and others live up mountains. So there's lots of different habitats. Feeding relationships in an ecosystem are represented by drawing food chains and a food chain will show the flow or transfer of energy from one organism to the next. So all energy on the planet comes from the sun. So we know in the process of photosynthesis that some of that sun's energy is trapped and converted by the plant into chemical energy. And so the plant is then eaten by an animal and that animal is in turn eaten by another animal, passing some of that energy along. However, most of it is lost as heat as you go from one level to the next in the food chain chain. So the trophic level is the feeding position in a food chain. Very important. You always start with the producer, then you've got the primary consumer, secondary consumer, etc. Because very little energy is passed from one trophic level to the next, it's this that limits the length of the food chain. And this is a common exam question. A food web is made up of many interconnected food chains and there's some important terms you need to know as well. You need to know herbivore is an organism that eats plants only. Carnivore is an organism that eats only animals. And an omnivore, very important, is an organism that eats both plants and animals. So no omnivore. Niche means the role an organism plays. It's a bit like what's its job. And a way of understanding the importance of niche is to think about the wolves in Yellowstone Park. Historically, the wolves in Yellowstone Park were the apex predators until they were hunted to extinction. This meant that the population of elk increased in numbers because their predator was gone. This had a drastic impact on vegetation and in turn biodiversity within the park. When wolves were reintroduced, the elk population decreased, the vegetation recovered and biodiversity overall improved. Also remember that no two species can occupy the same niche because competition will result and ultimately one species will lose out. So in ecology, everything is finely balanced. Another type of diagram that you encounter frequently are pyramids of numbers. And this is a way of representing or showing the number of organisms at each trophic level. It's very important that you always start with a producer at the base of the triangle. That's so important. Sometimes you can get a distorted pyramid this one is an inverted pyramid of numbers. You can see the producer, the oak tree. There's only one of them, but it's huge. So remember, these pyramids are representing the numbers of organisms. So very important, no inverted pyramid of numbers. Another example is a parasitic pyramid of numbers where you're dealing with parasites. Remember, you always have the producer at the bottom and it's representing numbers. So it's important that you recognise this. Remember, always use a ruler when you're drawing your pyramids of numbers and be able to state limitations. What are the limitations? Well, they don't take into account the size of the organism. Remember the oak tree. They can be difficult to draw to scale. That's another possible limitation. And they also may be inverted. That's another. 
So when you consider an ecosystem, you're also considering the environmental factors affecting organisms. And these can be split into abiotic, non-living factors and biotic, living factors, two important definitions. Abiotic factors can be split into climatic factors, edaphic factors and topographic factors. Very important that you know specifically edaphic factors are factors related to the soil and be able to give examples. Biotic factors are everything that involves something that's living, the presence of humans, seed dispersal, predation, competition, parasitism and pollination. And remember the pancake rhyme, how should people cook perfect pancakes? What controls populations? What controls the numbers in each population? So think of the wolves and the elk at Yellowstone Park and say to yourself CPPS, competition, predation, parasitism and symbiosis. CPPS. Competition is a struggle for a scarce resource. There is intraspecific competition and this is competition that takes place between members of the same species. So it could be the lions competing for mates. It could be particular type of plants competing for light, space, nutrients and water. Whereas interspecific competition is competition taking place between members of different species. So the bear and the wolf fighting for the same prey. There is contest competition where there's one outright winner. One species or one organism gets all of the resource. Whereas with scramble competition, they all get some of the resource resource but not equally. So with the plants they'll all get some light, water and minerals but some will get more than others. Predation is another important definition. It's catching, killing and eating another organism. Predation is hugely important and might be on your exams this year. Make sure that you study the graph and there's a separate video on that. What is meant by parasitism? This is defined as a situation where one organism lives on or in another organism of a different species feeding on it and causing harm. Different species is key. Ectoparasite lives outside the host and endoparasite lives inside the host. What is meant by symbiosis? This is defined as a relationship between different species in which at least one benefits and it can be further broken down into mutualism and commensalism. So what is meant by each of these? Well, mutualism is when they both benefit, both species benefit and commensalism means only one benefits but it doesn't harm the other. The introduction of non-native or exotic species has been encountered a few times at the exams. So what can happen? Well, firstly, it might not be successful. The introduction might not be successful because the new organism fails to adapt to the environment. There may be unintended consequences, for example, a decline in other native species, consider the niche. Biological control, this means introducing one organism to control numbers of another. So what are the factors that affect aquatic habitats? This has never been asked, so it could be on your exams. Well, light penetration, the action of currents, wave action, salt concentration and oxygen concentration are all factors. What are the factors affecting the human population? War, famine, disease, natural disasters and contraception can cause a decline in the human population. What is meant by conservation? It is management of the environment. And why is conservation so important? Why should we be interested in it? To maintain biodiversity and also to prevent other species or particular species from going extinct. You should be able to give an account of a conservation practice and we specifically choose conservation in the fishing industry. Fishing quotas are now in place and this prevents the overfishing of particular species and also net size regulation is now in place and this ensures that young or immature fish are not caught and have a chance to reach maturity. Pollution is another topic that's popular on the exams and pollution is defined as any harmful addition to the environment. An example of agricultural pollution is de with agricultural waste, slurry. Slurry is rich in nutrients and if it makes its way into waters it will cause algal bloom, so the excessive growth of algae. The algae will eventually die off and this results in all the oxygen being used up by decomposers, so the oxygen is removed from the water and eventually all organisms die. This process is known as eutrophication and it's very important that you can state that it's called eutrophication. So how do we prevent this problem? What's the solution? Well, with slurry in particular, it must be stored in special tanks and then it's spread on the land only in dry weather. And there are very clear guidelines about this. And if you breach those guidelines, well, then there are hefty penalties. Waste management. How do we deal with our waste, which is an ever increasing problem? In Ireland, we either use landfill dumps or incineration. They're the two main methods. Landfill is not ideal because there's now a lack of suitable sites and it attracts vermin and it's very unhealthy. Incineration, it's expensive to set up and there's often local objection. So what's the solution to this problem? Well, the solution is threefold. Reduce, reuse 
and recycle. Nutrient recycling, carbon and the nitrogen cycle are very important, as is the study of an ecosystem. Both of these topics will appear on your paper, so you must study them. They're not in this video, but there is another video that will help you study those. Really important. Remember, this is only an ecology summary. It's only looking at exam papers and going over the questions. So using your textbook and your notes, do the exam questions. Best of luck.